Hello and welcome to the Tank Club. In New World Season 3, The Rise of the Angry Earth expansion, we've seen a complete overhaul of the gear system and this has meant that all of your old gear is now pretty much useless. This is because gear expertise has been removed, gear score has been increased to 700 and it's kind of now easier to get much better gear much faster than it was before. With this patch there are brand new gear pieces and named items, many perks have changed and new perks have been added and there is the introduction of the artifact gear. With artifact gear you can slot one armor artifact which includes shields, one weapon and one jewelry artifact. There are also new drop curation systems in place, basically if you're wearing heavy armor then the vast majority of the gear that you loot will be heavy armor. When you wield a flail and shield and a warhammer for example, the vast majority of the weapons you loot will be those weapons. The only things that drop different are mostly named items. These can drop even when you're not using anything that curates with it. But this system seems to work very very well for me so far. So today we're going to be looking at the best farmable gear sets for tanks in New World. We'll look at how to obtain them and how to upgrade them, as well as what perks to look out for. And for the sake of this video, we're going to focus on the average heavy armor tank. So first, let's look at upgrading and crafting 700 gear score gear. So you could now upgrade new named items to 700 gear score. To do this, you'll need the item to be a named gear piece that is 650 gear score or higher and the materials to upgrade it. You then need to go to the gypsum kiln and scroll all the way to the bottom and you can upgrade this gear to 700. You'll need to make sure that this gear is out of your gear sets or it won't be visible in this list when you want to upgrade it. When upgrading gear, you get to choose the final perk that is going to attach to this gear set. It comes with two set perks plus one additional perk that you get to choose. This means that you can get a set with a guaranteed two piece of gear that you like and the third random perk which you can then just upgrade it to give it the perk that you want. As you can see here, I've got sturdy energy. Maybe I don't want that perk. So I can basically consume this piece of gear into the gypsum kiln to then give myself a gear piece with a different perk. Gear will often drop in the 650 to 700 range and can be purple or gold quality, like this gear that I have here. It's almost 700. This charcoal earring has one perk that I really want, which is an RNG chance to get it. So the refreshing toast perk. So when I go to the gypsum kiln, if I upgrade this, I'm going to lose that perk unless I choose to go with it again just to upgrade it by two gear score. So if I want to create a new max item, I'm probably just going to farm an additional charcoal earring and then use that instead of using the gold one that already has the perk that I want. When you upgrade gear, it will consume the item you currently have regardless of what gear score or quality it is. So like you see here, it shows a purple one, but it's going to use the gold quality one that I've got in my inventory. Another way to obtain gear is to collect materia from doing mutated expeditions. It will take a fair bit of time to get enough materia somewhere in the region of 25 M1 mutated expeditions to craft one piece of gear. But it's an option if you're struggling to get all the pieces you need. The downside to this is that you can't choose the third perk. So potentially you'll have to craft this piece of gear with the materia. And then once you've done that, you'll then have to go to the upgrade to get it with the actual perk that you wanted to get that third perk. But that is basically how crafting and upgrading 700 gear score gear works with this pack. Let's move on to armor. So I haven't had time to fully test every single perk in the game to figure out the absolute best in slot tank gear. But we can utilize the information that we know already to get a decent, decent idea of what sets are worth farming. I mostly want to focus on the perks refreshing, health, anything that buffs my weapon abilities. So perks such as things like empowering whirling blade or refreshing mighty gavel, for example. Other perks I'm looking to consider are Grit Ward, Enchanted Ward, Conditioning Perks. Basically anything that gives me a defensive benefit or a tank related benefit is going to be good. Another important thing to note is refreshing can only be used on four gear pieces now. It's not worth using more than four because you cannot keep stacking it more than four times. So if you've got every single piece of gear with refreshing on it, it's not being used. After four, it stops adding any more bonus. So you have to think about that when you are working through your gear because it's not worth overstacking perks that can't be stacked. So the most immediately accessible gear is actually the Alliance gear. So now you've got the option of getting 675 gear from the Alliance vendor. Now it is a little bit pricey, 22,277 tokens, 6,750 gold this would cost for the breastplate, but it comes with Enchanted Ward, Refreshing Health, Constitution, and a gem slot. So if you don't have any gear, 
you've got some gold, you've got some tokens, you could utilize those straight away to get yourself to 675. Now what 675 gear is going to do is it's going to allow you to go and do all expeditions, you could go and do M1 expeditions, and you're even accessible into M2 expeditions. The only thing is that weapons aren't that great from the vendor, and there isn't really any jewelry either. But for the body pieces, you've got very accessible, good traded gear that you can obtain straight away. Next, we're going to look at some sets that are a bit closer to best in slot. The first one we've got is the Keratin set. This has Magnify, Grit Ward, Refreshing, and then one other perk, which you can select or not, if depends if you loot it or craft it or upgrade it. If you get this with health or a weapon ability buffing perk to match the weapons that you're using, then it would be really, really good. Grit Ward works very well for an active tank who has 300 constitution, and you can be face tanking extra damage while you're doing light and heavy attacks or any abilities with grit added to them, and you're going to take reduced damage because that's what the Grit Ward is offering you. To obtain this, you'll need to kill bosses in Brimstone Sands in the Heli area or Kepri, so you shouldn't have too much trouble in getting this as every boss in this area has a chance to drop the set. And elite runs happen very frequently in Heli. Another pretty close to what I would call best in slot set would be the Azoth Crystal set. And this gives you refreshing and enchanted ward. Enchanted ward reduces incoming damage from light and heavy attacks, which is comparably as good as grit ward in a very different kind of way. So grit ward is obviously going to only be effective when you have grit active. So when you're doing light and heavy attacks, when you're doing abilities, whereas enchanted ward is going to be active all the time, as long as you're receiving light and heavy attacks. So it's a very good set, a very good perk, for reducing incoming damage. This set is obtainable by killing every boss in every expedition, but it has to be on mutation two or three for this set to drop. So it's a bit more difficult to obtain, but it is a very good set and it drops everywhere. So it doesn't matter what expedition you do, as long as it's on M2, you've got a chance to drop the Azoth Crystal set. Other sets that you could use include conditioning sets, which give you damage reduction to a specific damage type for five seconds after you are hit by that damage type. In most cases, I'd prefer to use a shield ward or protection perk to cover me for these damage types, as it's only like one or two pieces of gear to farm, rather than a whole five pieces of gear, and having multiple different sets for multiple different environments, like we had to do before in the past with the ward gear. I'd rather not do that. But if you do want to farm some of the sets, you've got Chardis, which gives you slash conditioning. This comes from Lazarus M3 only. You've got Expedition Captain, which is strike conditioning. This comes from... Commander Thorpe in M3 Depths, and you've got some various fire conditioning sets that drop in Imperium Forge M3. Artifact options on gear are fairly limiting. The one main one for a tank that I do like is the Void Dark Plate, which gives you 20% increased armor, enchanted ward, and physical aversion. Since this is an artifact item, you might use it with various different weapons. You might change your weapon, sometimes you'll use Spear, maybe sometimes you'll use a Warhammer. So you'd want to go with the generic third perk like health or elemental version, maybe to balance out that you've got physical on that already or something like grit ward. I'd avoid using refreshing so that you don't overstack it because if you've got a helmet, legs, boots, hands that have got refreshing on already, then don't put refreshing on the chest because it's not going to do anything. A lot of the other artifacts appear to have some uses for a tank, but maybe wouldn't be as frequently used, but more of a niche option. I do like the look of the medium armor nimble coat artifact, for example. And the attune leather pants may also be an option as they add extra attributes to your build, which is obviously always going to be very useful. Right, let's move on to amulets. Now, the main focus here for me is the protection perks, which are fairly vital for your survival in mutated expeditions. So let's say you're going to do a fire mutation. You want an, an amulet with fire protection because it gives you a massive amount of damage reduction to fire damage. It's also good to have protection perks against bosses that do certain damage types. So when you come up against a boss that's doing really, really heavy strike damage, then having a strike protection amulet is going to help you survive and take less damage from that specific boss type. Refreshing is another option for perks here if you don't have four pieces of refreshing already. And a few of the amulets that are really good, you've got Grove Light. It's an amulet that drops with nature protection, health, and one other perk. It comes from Taxodius in Genesis. And if you can get that extra perk to be Divines or Fortified, you'll have a really strong amulet for nature mutations. You've also got the Soul Shroud Amulet with Slash Protection Health and one of the other perks. This can be found in the Merc Guard Elite area in the Shattered Mountains. And it comes from pretty much any boss or enemy in this area. We've also got the Tangled Vine Amulet. It's the same as the other two, but with Thrust Protection. And it's obtained from enemies in the Elasian Wilds area. We've also got Sporlight Amulet, which is again the same, but with Strike Protection. 
and it's from bosses in Elysian Wilds. The other amulets don't really have the favourable perk of the guaranteed elemental protection. You might be able to find some niche options out there where you can choose the protection as like the, the final perk when you upgrade it from the gypsum kiln. So that's something to think about, but generally these are the ones that have already got it guaranteed already on there. So these are good ones to farm so you can start doing mutated and hard bosses. A final really good amulet would be the Demon Soul, which has fortified and stamina recovery and comes from the major breach cache, which is from doing the portals. This works especially well if you're using sort of a flail or a sword of shield and you're using frequent abilities that give you the fortify buff so you can extend the duration of it and you can make yourself really, really tanky. Amulet artifacts are also an option, but I personally think it's essential to use protection perks, which you change depending on the damage that you're facing. So, I mean, if you really wanted to optimize, you could use a lost stopwatch during ad pulls for 100% stun up time. If you've got a stun skill in there, you want to crowd control adds even better. You could use Ankh as well, which has some really strong capabilities with 50% increased incoming healing, which would be very strong against some of the hard hitting M3 expedition bosses. As we move on to rings, the most favorable perks here for me are hearty, and I really like leeching and then enfeebling is really strong, especially if you have regular abilities that apply weaken. And this is especially the case when using a flail. Damage perks are also good if you can match the weapon type to your ring. It can really help with maintaining threat by outputting more DPS. Rings like soul pollen with leeching, thrust damage and one other perk. And privateer's heirloom with hearty slash damage and one other perk could be used. Once again, the Azoth Crystal set is good with the Azoth Crystal Ring here. It drops from any boss in any M2 Expedition. It's guaranteed to have Hearty and Leeching, and then you can apply that third perk when you upgrade it in the Gypsum Kiln to be something strong for yourself. So maybe that would be Enfeebling if you are doing a lot of Weaken. One of my favorite artifacts is the Blood Drinker Ring artifact. It is somewhat questionable whether or not you can use this 100% of the time because you lose 25% damage but you gain 25% lifesteal from one of the perks, you get the lifesteal perk as well to give you another 7%. And this has really helped me survive in some really difficult fights. I managed to stay alive on an M2 boss fight by myself and solo it when the rest of my group had died, mostly thanks to this ring. But when it's combined with the leeching and hearty perks, you've got the option of choosing one additional perks, probably enfeebling for me. It's super strong. It does help you stay alive a lot easier, but you need to be careful because you might not be able to maintain enough threat on enemies when you lose 25% of your damage. Earrings are next, and my preferred perks here are Refreshing Toast. Despised is an optional one, and then Nimble or Purifying Toast. Refreshing is also an option if you've not got four pieces of it already. Despised is only really needed to help you maintain aggro of enemies so that you can use better weapons without the hated perk, but it's not 100% essential if you are good at keeping aggro without it. One of the strongest options here is the Soul Shroud Earring, which you get from the Merc Guard area once again, the same as the other piece. And it comes with Refreshing Toast Nimble, one of the park. Really, really good option. You get this in that Merc Guard Elite area in the Shattered Mountains. The only earring with a guaranteed Despise perk is the Spore Light Earring. You get this from any Elite area in Elysian Wilds. It has Despise and Nimble perks, and then the option of one other. There is an Artifact Earring, but I don't find it anywhere near as strong as Ankh or blood drinker so i just don't really think it's worth using shields so these actually classify as armor when it comes to artifacts so that's something to think about for ultimate tankiness you would want to use a tower shield and it really makes a difference whether you are using a flail or a sword in combination with a shield because it changes what perks you actually need to be using if you use a sword then you really want to have the fortifying shield rush as the main perk with a flail, this perk is absolutely useless because you don't have a skill that would proc it. The best perks to use on, a, on your average shield would be sturdy, shield defense, sturdy energy, and then a shield ward such as flame shield ward or slash shield ward or something like that, which you can switch between different mutation types. There are no great name shields to farm since the only available ones seem to drop with refreshing and this perk will likely be wasted if you collect the gear we've mentioned already. Two good shields, which both have the Fortifying Shield Rush perk, however, are the Mossborn Tower Shield and the Pharaoh's Tower Shield. Unfortunately, both of these are not upgradable and they just drop as they are at random gear scores with a random fourth perk, which you would want it to be sturdy. Mossborn has Nature Ward and Shield Defense, which is great for nature mutations, but it only drops in a Mutation 3 Genesis. Pharaoh's is a Thrust Ward Shield, pretty much the same, and again, it's great for bosses with Thrust Damage, but again, 
It only drops in a Mutation 3 Ennead. There's also the option of using the Wall Artifact, which gives you 5% reduced base damage and 25% less damage to all element types. However, you can no longer dodge. This means you'll either have to face tank a lot of damage or know exactly when to time block for big attacks. Since you can't sustain blocking for more than a couple of hits, you'll spend large portions of time just getting hit, so you need to have the rest of your build set up to output a lot of damage, potentially utilizing things like Grit Ward and Leeching to allow you to almost never block and utilize the damage reduction other than blocking big hits. It doesn't seem like a very beginner friendly option, but more of a survival tool for experienced players to output more DPS while taking less damage. When using a sword, the most essential perk will be refreshing move, and then things like leeching and enchanted are also good. The artifact sword is more of a DPS focused sword and I don't see much benefit of it for a tank. There are barely any named swords with the refreshing move perk, but the best one would be the Taiyi longsword that drops from enemies in Ebon Scale Reach. For the flail, we've got Odo, which is the artifact flail, and it's also one of the best and most accessible. You gain refreshing move, lifesteal, and Odo defense, which heals you for 5% when you block. So it's well made for tanking. When you do the final upgrade at the gypsum kiln, you need to make sure you attach a gem slot rather than a new perk so that you make this into a tank weapon with a carnelian gem. Otherwise, you can't attach a gem and then you don't have any taunt skills. For more information, check out the website on this for the flail. The artifact Warhammer isn't good because you cannot slot a gem into this one. You can't even slot a gem slot, so it's not good for tanking. If you want a really good Warhammer, the Azoth Crystal Warhammer is great. You get this from the M2 Expedition bosses, the same as all the other pieces. It comes with Vicious and Keen, which are decent traits. And you just need to add on Sundering Shockwave when you upgrade this from the Gypsum Kiln. And then you've got a virtually best in slot Warhammer. But a more accessible option is by killing the boss Remnant of Simon Jeffrey in Elysian Wilds. However, this one has a sturdy perk, which is a bit of a waste on a hammer. For great swords, Serenity is the artifact greatsword, and it's probably one of the better greatswords to go for if you intend on tanking with one as your main hand weapon. For the final upgrade, you need to make sure you attach a gem slot rather than picking another perk, or else you won't be able to really taunt. Using a greatsword is a more DPS focused tank weapon to use, and this artifact does a really good job of buffing your outgoing damage, and it will be a good option if you are playing as a tank with a greatsword. Once again, the Azoth Crystal Spear from M2 Expedition Bosses proves to be one of the best you can get. Make sure you add the Leeching Cyclone perk when upgrading it at the Gypsum Kiln, and this will come with Vicious and Keen perks on it as well. That covers all the essentials of gearing your tank in New World Season 3. For more information and a written guide about all the different gear that you could obtain for your tank, make sure you check out my website, thetankclub.com. We've got a nice article on there, which I'll keep updated with any other items that I find along my journeys. You need to just make sure that you're customizing your gear to match your playstyle. Adapting to in-game challenges is essential for successful tanking experiences and making sure you've got different wards and protections for different situations is really, really important. But having one good stable set of gear is now quite accessible thanks to this patch. If you need any more help or assistance, feel free to join the Tank Club Discord. We've got a very supportive community of New World Tanks where you can engage in discussions and get some assistance with any tank-related inquiries. Thank you very much to our Patreon and YouTube members for your support. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.